are thrilled that you have joined us for our first Sunday of Advent. I know it's hard to believe, but we have begun our journey toward Christmas, and so we are excited that you are here to celebrate and begin that journey with us. We do have a few announcements before we get started uh, and transition into our hour of worship. We'd love for you to take a look inside of your bulletin. We have, once again this year, poinsettias for sale. If you would like to order one of those, uh, we have an option for in honor of or in memory of. If you'd like to purchase one, please fill that out and uh, put it in the uh, offering plate so that we can collect those and make sure that we have enough. Uh, they are due by Monday, December 9th. So if you'd like a poinsettia, please fill this out and turn it in. Also, uh, today at 3 o'clock, we are starting a fun, short series uh, of Advent Yoga. So, uh, Tiag and Bolik will be teaching in the new hut at 3 p.m. It'll be a short uh, Advent meditation followed by a yoga practice. So, if you're looking for a way to, to connect and engage in this season, uh, not only uh, in your mind and your heart, but through your body as well, as we celebrate the one who comes in flesh, I invite you to attend that today. And child care is provided. 3 o'clock in the new hut. Also, we, uh, if you haven't noticed, we are uh, hosting Trosa's Christmas tree um, yard over here off uh, the parking lot down here. And if you are one of those folks, who I've become one of those folks since marrying into a real Christmas tree family. I grew up, I grew up with the fake stuff. Ten, ten kids, no real Christmas tree. Uh, so if you are, if you fall into that camp, we invite you to purchase one. But you get a special offering. Uh, we have two coupons in the church office for 20% off your Christmas tree as an orange uh, family member. So stop by the office and pick one of those up before you head over uh, to grab your tree. Uh, and also next Saturday, for all of you parents who need to get some Christmas shopping done or just need some. Christmas cheer to sit down with your spouse or uh, some friends and have breakfast. We are hosting uh, babysitting from 9 to noon next Saturday here, uh, and the youth will be doing that as a fundraiser. So please feel free to sign up. There are uh, ways to do that in your bulletin. You can um, email or talk with Pastor Brad if you have any questions. And uh, we will continue our Advent Bible studies this week. You are invited to join along. We have them on Thursdays at 2 or 6.45 p.m. The same study, just at either time for your convenience. And does anybody remember what time our Christmas Eve services are? Three, oh, Three five, seven, and nine. Very good. In uh, Pathways this morning, uh, Josh said that there would be a Christmas pageant put on by Pastor Corey and Josh. And uh, what he meant was directed by Pastor Corey and Josh, and the youth will be performing. So some folks may be surprised when they arrive, and it is not a duet of me and Josh. <laughs> so we invite you to that. 5 o'clock will be a contemporary uh, candlelight service, and 7 and 9 will be a traditional uh, candlelight service here in the sanctuary. I think that those are all the announcements. There are many other things going on this Advent season, including today you will receive your first Advent devotional written by a member of our church, and that will continue through Christmas. And so we want to thank everyone who has contributed, who signed up. Uh, this is such a special gift to our church, and I know that you will be blessed in those readings. So let us now stand together as we join in our call to worship as we turn our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hearing what God desires to speak this day. Lord Jesus Christ, we await your coming. We wait filled with hope. Knowing your light will shine in the darkness. We wait anticipating your peace. Believing that one day it will fill our world. We wait embracing your love. May we reach out to share it with our neighbors. We wait joy. Bubbling within us with the expectation of your birth. Lord, we wait. Come soon and fill us with your life. Indeed. Let us continue this morning by singing together, Come, thou long expected Jesus, number 196, in your hymn.
Davis family for to light our advocacy. And as they come forward, we invite you to sing together number 234, verse 1 of, oh, I'm sorry, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. 211. Let's sing together. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. 
Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And I invite you to turn to page one in your New Testament for our second lesson from Matthew's Gospel, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. And finally, if you, I invite you to turn to page 103 in your New Testament to John chapter 14, verses 27 through 25 through 27. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, indeed. Let us pray. Holy God of peace, we seek your peace in these darkening days. We seek a calm within and an absence of conflict between peoples and nations. But more deeply, we seek your shalom, the deep and abiding peace that will only come through the justice of your kingdom. Amen. Good morning once again. Today marks the beginning of the liturgical season of Advent. I've got my purple stole on. Advent begins today and lasts until Christmas Eve. This season of preparation has been observed by Christians since about the 4th century, and it comes to us from the Latin word avantus, which means coming. It's a season to prepare for the coming of Christ in many ways. The promised coming of the Messiah to the Jews, the coming of Jesus being born in Bethlehem, the promised return of the risen Christ in final victory, and the continual coming of Christ in our lives and in our hearts. This morning we light the candle of peace, and with its light we begin our Advent journey. And this Advent we will be exploring together an almost peace hope, joy, and love versus an altogether peace, hope, joy, and love. We'll journey to learn how Christ's light transforms our lives and hearts so that we might ultimately experience an altogether Christmas, not an almost. That difference, we pray, will become clearer as we move through our Advent series and season. But today, <coughs> We begin with peace, and peace is a word that we often hear this time of year. Hark the herald angel, sing with me. Glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. How about this one? It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from 
This one's a little hard, harder. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. And finally, sleep in heavenly peace. It's the word that echoes most loudly in my mind when I hear Linus remind us of the true meaning of Christmas and a Charlie Brown Christmas. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Peace encompasses a wholeness, completeness, soundness. It implies safety and security. When I hear the word peace, my mind envisions the serenity of a child like Linus reminding us of ultimate truth. It's the beauty of unified voices singing praises to God. It's a perfect snowfall that covers every flaw that lay beneath. It's breathing in the aroma of fresh coffee before the world wakes up. It's the smell of that Christmas tree only your great aunt can make. It's peeking into bedrooms to find excitedly exhausted children finally fast asleep. Peace is finally sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner, surrounded by the people you love, with more than enough food on your plate, and the beauty of that plate being a piece of 50-year-old wedding china. Peace is your little one walking into that dining room holding his grandma's hand and insisting upon climbing into the chair next to yours. The peace we know in our lives is often dictated by our external circumstances. If things outside of us are peaceful, then we are peaceful. Or peace is something we really work hard to maintain through breathing or practice or even denial. But when we leave it to ourselves, peace is often short-lived. It's easily interrupted. I know, because the moment that that little one from earlier got into the chair next to me, he proceeded to become violently ill, right there at Thanksgiving, in front of all those loved ones, and right on to that heirloom china. <laughs> Any momentary peace that I had clung to vanished very quickly. In church, despite our best attempts to create, maintain, or achieve peace in our own lives, we then think about the reality of peace in our world, which very accurately reflects the vision that the prophet Jeremiah, which we didn't read, but I will now give to us when he cries out to the people of Israel. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. One translation says they put a band-aid on a serious injury and pretend it is fine. It is not fine. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. We all long for peace, personal and communal, and yet its presence can feel so fleeting and far away. We're overwhelmed by the inner turmoil we face in our own hearts, the chaos of our day to day, our unsettledness about the future, the conflict we have within ourselves and with others. Our inability to manage our hurt, our anger, our disdain, our fear, our powerlessness. We're consumed by the pain of the world, the war, the violence, the division, the injustices that we hear of and we witness. They say peace, peace, when there is no peace. And yet we find ourselves at the threshold of that being met with the promise of peace. Despite everything in our lives and world that counters it, the promise that the Prince of Peace, Jesus himself, has come, is coming, and will come again to set all things right. To bring about a perfect kind of peace, a different kind of peace, an abiding peace. Our belief and hope in that peace matters. Because it dares to say that we will not settle for the almost peace of the world. The peace, peace when there is 
no peace, the fleeting and false peace. It dares to say that we can ask for more. That we will ask for more as a faithful people, a praying people. We will dare to believe in a more powerful peace. A peace that isn't fleeting and that cannot be taken away from us because it isn't something we carry in our hands or we have to see with our eyes to believe it. It's a peace we receive as a gift through the Spirit into our very hearts and beings. It's a culturally defiant peace that confuses our society and says that even in the midst of a dark and cold world, we will stand by this wreath, by the light of Christ, and be warmed by its radiance. It is our belief that Isaiah's words are not empty, but our promises that are being and will be fulfilled. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah promises a transformative peace, a peace that turns weapons into tools that produce abundance. Isaiah promises that the Prince of Peace is coming, and because of that, we receive the altogether peace that comes from our trust and belief in that promise. It's a peace that declares God is still the author of the story. That even in the midst of our personal and communal brokenness, Jesus is making all things right and new. It's not a peace based on our external circumstances or actions that comes as gift. Even the characters in our gospel story this morning struggle with this experience of almost peace versus an altogether peace. They are ushering in the birth of the Savior, but they themselves, they're just like us. They're broken, they're human, and they're full of fear. In our lesson from Matthew, Joseph's almost peace is interrupted when he receives the difficult and disruptive word that his betrothed is pregnant, and the baby isn't his. So Joseph immediately tries to put a bandage on it. He was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose Mary to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph was heartbroken, we can imagine it, but he still wanted to create the semblance of peace, control his losses, and divorce Mary quietly. Yet after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary as his wife and gave him the name Jesus. It was an altogether peace that descended upon Joseph in the form of an angel that changed and transformed his life, that redirected his path to be in line with that of the spirits. It wasn't a peace he created himself or that he even dug deep for. The saving peace he received from the promise of Jesus' birth changed all the plans he'd made. It abandoned all the worldly circumstances that consumed him, and it gave him an assurance that even the plans he didn't make would be redeemed as he surrendered to the call of the living God. And the one who came to Joseph as a babe laying in a manger is the same one who speaks to us in John 14 when he promises his disciples, My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Jesus tells each of us that he gives a new peace. Not the peace the world claims, that's a false peace. In Jesus' time, the peace of the world was the Pax Romana, the peace of the Roman Empire, a peace only obtained through violence and oppression and injustice. Jesus' peace is nothing like that. Jesus' peace is an assurance that God's grace will always have the final word. Regardless 
of the cheap, almost peace that the world offers. And Jesus makes that peace available to us right now. It is a peace that stands stronger than our circumstances, than our brokenness. It is a promise to a people who long for peace that we can know now. A peace that encompasses our whole hearts, not momentarily, but completely and eternally. It's a peace that comes from trusting God and living out that trust. It's not a passive peace. It's an active peace in body in our everyday. As I pondered, what might this peace look like? How might we witness to it? It may seem silly or childish, but the story of the Grinch kept coming up for me. Here we have the Who's who have had everything the world tells us matters and should give us comfort, security, and happiness. It's all been stolen, stolen away in a single night. Everything. They've lost the gifts, the decorations, the roast beast. <laughs> Nothing is left. And yet the source of their peace, the source of their hope, joy and love, isn't dictated by those outside circumstances. It isn't easily shaken. It isn't an almost peace. It's an altogether peace. That no matter what happens, the truth always remains the same. No matter what, Christmas is still coming. Despite the suffering, the brokenness, and the pain. And so they keep singing louder and louder so that even the Grinch could hear that what they had, the most important thing, could not be taken from them. And that kind of peace is contagious. It's confusing to the Grinches and to the world. And ultimately, it's transforming. We know what happened to the Grinch. May our songs of peace this Advent be as loud and as true and as altogether transforming. Amen. Let us stand together and join as we affirm our faith as one people by saying together the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881 in your history. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. this table all who love him and who seek to live in peace with one another. We proclaim in that seeking what Isaiah promises, that we lay down our swords and our spears, and in exchange we receive the abundance of God's grace not only for ourselves but enough to share with a world in desperate need of the peace this table offers. As we seek that peace, let us turn in our hymnals to page 12 as we join to confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And friends, as those who long for peace, let us stand and offer one another signs of reconciliation and Christ.
God Emmanuel, Holy Spirit, God the Father, Jesus the Son, we ask that you would pour your Spirit upon and these gifts. May they be used so the world might know that God is indeed with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You may be seated. <clears throat> Included in your bulletin are a list of prayer requests that we invite you to use as a guide in your prayer life this week. We also have uh, several we'd like to add to this list, including Paul Mann, who uh, continues uh, to be at UNC in the ICU uh, and is continuing to recover and uh, has even become more talkative in the last 24 hours, so we give God praise for that. Continue to pray for Helen Clark. She's also at UNC uh, and continuing to battle um, an infection. Uh, and also, Pastor Adam is not here this morning. He is feeling ill, uh, but is at home. So continue to lift up Pastor Adam. Uh, his vacation was caught up with him. But, uh, lift him up in, uh, that he might feel better. I know it's a rotten way to end vacation. So let us pray now to the one who is indeed with us. In the hushed anticipation of your coming, O Lord, kindle in us the desire to remain awake, that we might be ready for your coming and eager to pray. O God, in days to come, the mountain of your house will be established, and your joy shall reign. We pray for the church universal and for this congregation of Orange United Methodist, that you might teach us your ways and that we might walk in your paths. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and you, O God, shall judge between the nations. We pray for our nation and all nations, that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In your kingdom, Lord, wolves lie down with lambs, and children play without fear. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and those in distress of any kind. Especially this morning, we lift up to you Paul Mann, Helen Clark, Pastor Adam, Lydia Twombly, Bill Christian, Lacey Gerard, Ben Keebler, Francis Cooper, Bill Blackwood, and Nadine Sharp. That you would heal all injuries, comfort all grief, and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. And in your kingdom, O Lord, even the wilderness and dry land are glad and rejoice. We pray for those who rejoice this week. As many rejoice in celebrations, we pray that they might obtain joy and gladness, and that sorrow and sighing might flee away. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In the fullness of time, O God, you sent your Son to be born of our sister Mary, and his name was Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for your presence with us, and we pray that you might be always present with those whom we love but no longer see. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Come among us, O oh God, and hear our prayers, so that when your Son, Jesus, comes among us with great might and in manger mild, we might recognize his face and his voice and come to adore him. Let us continue our communion liturgy with the great thanksgiving found on page 13 in your hymnal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, 
When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many, the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ is Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, with boldness, we pray as children of God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Church, as we come forward this morning to receive the gift of Holy Communion, we will do so by the method of intinction. We invite you to come forward with your hands open, and into which you will receive a piece of bread. You may take the bread and then dip it in the cup, receiving both elements together. If you are in need of gluten free, that is also an option that will be in the center. We invite you to utilize that as necessary. You'll also notice there are two small baskets on the front, uh, on the edge of the front two pews. That goes to our emergency relief fund. And so if you would like to give uh, as you feel led and you come forward, we invite you to do so as well. At this time, I invite the uh, ushers and those who will be serving communion to come forward.
The table has been prepared. You've been invited. Come taste and see that the Lord is good.
sing, Lift Up Your Heads in My Knees, number 213.